These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. All right, what were your thoughts on that? Oh, um, well, I was just confused because it gives you the, gives you the average power output. It's right. not something from that power, how much average power does the surface area get. Right. So I was looking at the formulas for power, but I was confused, like this one, power equals work over time, like relates distance right. and force, but then I would have to go into all of this, but I don't know if I was just doing it. I just got confused in all the okay. questions and stuff like that. Well, I gotta say the problem seems a little bit misleading to me, or miswritten, so. So here we have a point source of electromagnetic radiation. Uh, and what's the power of that point source? 100 watts. 800 watts? 800, yes. Yeah. An 800 watt source. That means 800 joules per second. In, each, uh, in one second, it would distribute 800 joules of energy. OK. Um, and then they're looking at a distance that's d meters from the source say d meters from the source, and they want to know, the question technically asks you for the power when you're d meters from the source. Um, but actually, it's 800 watts. This is an 800 watt source. It would be the same power out here that it is down here. What I think they're going for, I think they really want to find the intensity. I think what he meant to say is, what's the intensity? Um, well, no, 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 actually, uh, no, maybe I was being too critical of the instructor that wrote this, uh, which power of the surface. Oh, uh, no, 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 all right, who was I to, uh, to criticize this professor here? They know what they're doing. Okay, so now I see what they're going for. Um, so, uh, let's see here. So we're going to use this formula. Intensity equals, well, what's our definition of intensity? Um, power over area. OK. Remember that sometimes people use s, or sometimes they use i for intensity. So to start with, let's find the intensity of the radiation at this point. That would be a good sum question. So as a sum question, let's find the intensity at this point. Well, let's kind of go through this together. Um, so we know the intensity is the power uh, over the area. Uh, but again, we know this is an 800 watt source, so there's 800 watts of power. And the only question is, how big of a surface is the 800 watts being spread over when we get to this point? Well, for a point source, what are the wavefronts? For a point source, the wavefronts are spheres. It's kind of intuitive that a point source would have expanding uh, spherical wavefronts coming out from it. Like this. I can't draw a sphere, but I can draw the, uh, the circular cross-section. So there would be a spherical wavefront at this point. So the original 800 watts of power is now spread over this entire spherical surface area. So what area do we need to put in here? We need to put the surface area of a sphere. The area that's relevant here is the surface area of a sphere. Do you happen to remember that formula? Um, or it might be on the page here. 
I didn't give it in the uh, the test. I don't think. Uh, oh well. Anyway, I'll remind you. I, I I see where we would find it. So the surface area of a sphere is four pi. Should it be r cubed or r squared? R. This is something we should be able to figure out. Because what are the units for area? So there's no way it could be r cubed, because that would give us the wrong units. So the hard part is to figure out the 4 pi, but it's got to be 4 squared, because it's an area. Okay, so that's the surface area of a, of a sphere, 4 pi r squared. So that's what we would plug in for the area down here. So it's still an 800 watt power source, it's just that the 800 watts used to be concentrated on a single point, and now it's being spread over a great big sphere. Okay, so now uh, plugging in a little bit more, well, how can we start simplifying this expression? Um, it would be so far uh, 200 over pi r squared. And how can we simplify this more in terms of the problem? Do we know what r is? So, so in that case, we, in, in a sense, we do know it is. This is a distance of d. All right, so now this tells us the intensity at this point. So notice that, in a sense, um, the power of the wavefront is the same as it used to be. The power of the original point wavefront was 800 watts, and the power of this whole spherical wavefront is still 800 watts. It's just been spread over a greater area, so the intensity is smaller. How would you see that? What happens psychologically when something has a lower intensity? How do you see that light has a lower intensity? How would you see that psychologically? Um, when there's a lower intensity, it's uh, less bright. Yeah, it would be dimmer. Well, this is just our common sense. We know that when we're close to the source, we would see bright light, and further away it's dim. But now we can see why. The power, the energy is the same, but it's being spread over a larger and larger surface. So there's less area, uh, less uh, energy and power at any point. OK, so this is our intensity. And so we've answered the sub-question. The sub-question was to find the intensity. And now we can find the main question, which is to find the power. Power received by surface of area A. Maybe I shouldn't have used A here, because they have a special meaning for A in the problem. So I should have just called this area and power, because they have a special area A that they're focusing on in the problem. So what formula do you think would be appropriate to use at this point? Um, power equals intensity times area. Yeah, the same exact formula we're just working on over here. We're just going to use that again. You can solve it for power, though. That's a good idea. So if we solve this for power, you would get that the power equals the intensity times the area. Stop and think about that a little bit more. Um, so what you wrote or was... Is it... Or is it just A? Just A. So yeah, this is uh, the convention in physics. Um, you're allowed to use a variable in your answer if it was given in the problem. We were given this variable A in the problem, so we don't need to substitute for A. We're just supposed to pretend that we know a number for A. And you couldn't use 4 pi r squared for this because there's no, uh, 4 pi r squared is only the surface area of a complete sphere. But now he just wants the power on a section of the sphere. I, I should have drawn that in the picture. So now he's focusing on a certain section of the sphere that has an area of A. So we couldn't use 4 pi r squared for it because it's not the whole sphere anyway. Now he wants the power on that certain uh, section of the sphere. So we just keep putting in A. Okay. So when you multiply it out, it becomes 200. Yeah, basically we got the answer right here. This is as much simplification as we can do. Now you always should check on a test like this to make sure you're only using variables you were given. But now we're doing that. We're using D and A, and those are the variables that we were given. OK, so uh, this actually, uh, I started out uh, on the wrong foot. This actually is a very fair uh, question. So the, the concepts here are the power of the wavefront stays constant as the wavefront expands. So originally the wavefront was a single point, and it had a power of 800 watts. 
So then when it's expanded to this great big sphere, the total power over the entire wavefront is still 800 watts. That's kind of conservation of energy, because originally there was 800 joules per second. Well, that 800 joules can't disappear, so there's still 800 joules per second passing through this great big sphere. It's just that the intensity is lower because it's been spread out more. So what's the power over this great big sphere? 800 watts. But that doesn't mean there's 800 watts on this little sliver of it. How much power is there on this little sliver? Well, whatever this number is down here. 